Hello, welcome to Children's Chapel. I'm so glad that you've joined me today. We're going to be talking about um, something a little similar to last week. Uh, first, I was going to remind you that this is the third Sunday of Easter. As Samantha mentioned um, last week's lesson, Easter is not just one day, it is a season. So we have seven Sundays of Easter and then we have Pentecost. So this is the third Sunday of Easter. I also want to um, discuss the gospel books. So the New Testament, which is the second part of our Bible, the first four books in that part of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are books that are from each of those four men who were part of the 12 disciples of Jesus. So each one told their story as they experienced it in a little bit different way. So it's kind of like if you were with a group of your friends or maybe your brothers and sisters and something really interesting happened and then you all went and ran and told your mom or your teacher or your parent and each one of you told your story a little bit differently but you're all talking about the same thing the person listening would have a whole lot more information and a, a much bigger understanding of what the what actually happened because they got to hear each of your sides of the story so that's kind of like how our books of Matthew Mark Luke and John are and last week Samantha read uh, from the book of John and this week I'm going to read from the book of Luke so listen closely and see if anything sounds familiar in this week's reading that you heard last week. But this is Luke's side of the story, and last week was John's side. So it begins like this. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. So what, um, what things did you hear similar in the reading today? Um, that you may have heard last week. And if you didn't hear last week, you can always go back and, and watch it. It's still there to watch. Um, one of the things I noticed was uh, the phrase, peace be with you, that is offered for, for comforting and, and, and that we say in church, what do we usually say if somebody says, peace be with you? We say, and also with you, or peace of Christ be with you too. So that's where we get that. That's why we do that in our church service. It's because um, Jesus did that as an example for us. Another thing that is uh, interesting, last week Thomas was doubting um, because he hadn't been there with them in John's version. In Luke's version, he doesn't really mention Thomas here. But he does mention that all of the disciples that were there 
really were in disbelief themselves. Even though they were looking right at Jesus, they thought, this can't be true. He's a, he, he must be a ghost because they'd all seen him uh, be killed on the cross and they saw him buried in the tomb. And so that was really hard for them to, to believe, even though they were seeing it with their very own eyes. And that's how come Jesus had to convince them and, and say, you know, here's my hands, touch my hands and see my feet. And then he ate in front of them, which was also very convincing to say, I'm, I'm here and I'm alive and I'm, I'm whole. So that was very important. And he did remind them that he told them all these things before, it, before it ever happened. Remember how he told them before um, he said, you know, he was going to be arrested and he would be killed and that he would rise again. Well, here he is, he has risen again and he, he's reminding them, I told you all of these things. <laughs> you shouldn't be surprised. So, so I thought, I thought that was really interesting. And then what did he say at the very end? I don't, I don't know if it was very clear, but when he opened their mind to the scriptures so that they could truly understand and he told them to proclaim his name to all the nations. I think, I think when he's saying, you know, you've seen all of these things, so you can go tell everybody. You believe these things, so you can, uh, you can encourage other people to believe them too because you were there. He's asking them to be teachers. Telling is teaching, right? So have you ever felt like you might have been a teacher to somebody? You may have taught them something they didn't know how to do, maybe taught somebody how to tie their shoes, or um, if they didn't know something about the schoolwork and you explained it to them and you were a teacher, you were telling them from your own experience. You're saying, I do it this way, or this is what I figured out, or this is what I know, and you tell it to somebody else, you're teaching them. You can also teach people about Jesus. Not everybody knows these stories. Not everybody's heard, heard about these things. And some people have and may not understand, but it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, how anything you are. Everybody can be a teacher and everybody can, can tell what they know and what they believe to other people. So I think that's really important thing to understand that we all have that power, not just the disciples. So let us bow our heads and, and end with a prayer. We'll do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thanks, it was so good to see you here. Bye-bye.